Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing linear transformations. Okay, so in this final video what we're going to do is define what the kernel of a linear transformation is. Now the kernel of a linear transformation is written shorthand like so, ker t, but just in case you've never seen the spelling of it before I'll write it out in full, so we call it a kernel of t. Okay, so what then is the definition of the kernel of a linear transformation? Well, just as the image of a linear transformation was a subset of uh, the codomain vector space of a linear transformation, the kernel of a linear transformation is going to be a subset of the domain vector space. Okay, so it's going to be all the vectors in the domain vector space, so all little v in the domain vector space, such that the linear transformation t maps little v onto the zero vector in the um, codomain vector space. So drawing a picture here, so if we have our um, domain vector space here, capital V, and we have our codomain vector space here, capital W, and let's colour them in. So we have our domain vector space, as always, denoted in V here, and our codomain vector space uh, will be denoted, as always, in red. Then this is all the vectors in the domain vector space which are mapped onto the zero vector in the codomain vector space. So here is the zero vector in our codomain vector space, and I'll underline it in red. And this is going to be all the vectors in the domain vector space which, by the linear transformation, are mapped onto the zero vector. Now, one such vector that we know is always mapped onto the zero vector, because we proved so in the previous video, is the zero vector in the codomain. Okay, so here is zero in the codomain, and we know that that's always mapped onto uh, the um, zero vector in the codomain. Okay, but if this linear transformation is not uh, injective, i.e. not one-to-one, -one, then there is the possibility that more vectors in the domain vector space are going to be mapped onto the zero vector in the codomain vector space. So just as uh, the image of T was a boring concept if we had a subjective linear transformation, the kernel of the linear transformation T is a boring concept if we have an injective linear transformation, because if it's injective then it is one-to-one, -one. there's only one element in the domain that's mapped onto each of the elements in the codomain, uh, so that would mean that the zero vector could be the only vector that was being mapped onto the zero vector in the codomain. But if our linear transformation is non-injective, then there's the possibility that we'll end up with more uh, vectors in the uh, domain vector space being mapped onto the zero vector in the codomain vector space, and then the kernel will become more interesting. Okay, so it's a subset then of the um, domain vector space here, which is all the elements of the domain vector space which are being mapped onto the zero vector in the codomain vector space. Okay, so what then do we want to prove now after we've seen this definition? Well, we're going to prove that this is actually a very interesting subset because again, it is always a subspace. So the next thing that I want to prove then is that the kernel of a linear transformation is always a subspace of the domain vector space capital V. Okay, so we need to go through the same three criteria that we went through for the image of T, but now we're doing it in the domain vector space rather than the codomain vector space. Okay, so let's see if we can remember the three criteria then. So criteria number one, once again, we need to prove that the subset is closed under addition. So I need to prove that for all little v1 and little v2, which are elements of the kernel of the linear transformation, so you pick any two elements that are in this subset of the domain vector space of vectors that are mapped onto the zero vector, it must be the case that if you add them together using the inherited addition law on the subset um, from the larger vector space capital V, that that answer is also an element of the kernel of the linear transformation. So the kernel of the linear transformation must be closed under addition. So how am I going to prove this? Well, uh, let's just think about what the definition of V1 plus V2 being in the kernel of the linear transformation actually means. 
if we want v1 plus v2 to be in the kernel, that means that the linear transformation must map v1 plus v2 onto the zero vector. So I want to prove that t will map v1 plus v2 onto the zero vector if t maps v1 and v2 onto the zero vector. Well, this is quite simple because I can now apply the first property of a linear transformation to this and say that t of v1 plus v2 is just going to equal t of v1 plus t of v2. Okay, so where we've turned the addition in the domain vector space into addition in the codomain vector space here. But now I know something about what t of v1 and t of v2 is equal to, because v1 and v2 are both elements of the kernel of the linear transformation. So t of v1 is just the zero vector in the codomain vector space, and t of v2 is just the zero vector in the codomain vector space. So I'm just adding together the zero vector with the zero vector, and of course when I do that I will end up with the zero vector. Okay, so now I have indeed proven that t of v1 plus v2 is equal to the zero vector if v1 and v2 are elements of the kernel of the linear transformation. So indeed this now proves that v1 plus v2 is also going to be an element of the kernel of the linear transformation. Okay, so indeed the kernel of a linear transformation is closed under addition. So next criterion, criterion number two, says that if you pick any vector in the kernel of the, of the uh, linear transformation, this subspace to B, okay, and you pick any element of the field, so all C that you can possibly come up with from the field capital F, we need to prove that the kernel is closed under scalar multiplication. So I need to prove that C times V is still an element of the kernel of the linear transformation. Okay, so exactly the same strategy as we applied here. If we want to prove that C times V is in the kernel of the linear transformation, we need to prove that T of C times V is equal to zero. Okay, uh, that's just the definition of C times V being in the kernel of the linear transformation. Uh, so now, how are we going to analyze what t of c times v is equal to? Well, we're going to use the second property of linear transformations to say that this is always the same as c times t of v, but we know something about what t of v is equal to, because v is an element of the kernel of the linear transformation. So t of v here is just going to be the zero vector in uh, the codomain vector space. So I can replace this now with c times the zero vector in the codomain vector space. And I know that if you take the zero vector in any vector space and scalar multiply it by any scalar, you always get the zero vector back again. That's one of the properties of vector spaces. So C times the zero vector will always equal the zero vector. Okay, so hence we have proven that T of C times V is equal to the zero vector if T of V is equal to the zero vector. So indeed the kernel of a linear transformation is going to be closed under scalar multiplication. Finally, criterion number three, we've already stated this because criterion number three just means that the zero vector in the domain vector space has to be an element of this subset, the kernel of the linear transformation. Okay, so that's the final criterion for the kernel of T to be a subspace, that it must contain the zero vector from the larger vector space. Okay, and we know that that's true because we know that the zero vector in the domain vector space is always, always mapped onto the zero vector in the codomain vector space, and hence the zero vector will be an element of the kernel of the linear transformation. So indeed, the kernel of the linear transformation is a subspace of the domain vector space, capital V. Okay, so I'm going to end this video here. These definitions, the image of the linear transformation, the kernel of the linear transformation, we will be using these a lot in upcoming videos and we will gain more intuition uh, about them. At the moment, we're just giving the definitions and we will understand why they are important in later videos. So. This is just meant to be an introduction to the concept of the image of a linear transformation and the kernel of a linear transformation, and we'll see uh, the beautiful ways in which they are important in upcoming videos.